The important thing is ultimately this is a matter for the government of the day. But obviously if this, as the statutory office holder, um, I have my own views upon them. Any such change would be massively disruptive to existing investigations and would provide succour to those individuals and companies who feel the right course is not to cooperate with the SFO in the course of an investigation. So the idea of breaking up that model with no evidence that what one was moving to would be any better, I think is just not sensible. But as I say, it's, it's a matter for the government of the day. In a sense, this whole debate about the future of the SFO tends to rather miss the point, which in my view is this. Um, are sufficient resources being devoted to uh, what you might call the mid-level and lower levels of fraud in this country? The SFO is entirely clear that we do the very top tier of serious and complex fraud. Are sufficient resources devoted to the rest? Sure, very good work is done by the National Crime Agency and by the City of London Police, but nowhere near sufficient resources devoted to that, in my view, and that, again, is a matter of uh, public confidence. Now, many of your ongoing investigations, like LIBOR and foreign exchange, manipulation relate to the behaviour of employees uh, of banks and other financial institutions. Do you uh, understand the level of public anger that still exists in the wake of the financial crisis and uh, particularly over the fact that no British bankers have gone to jail as a result of such appalling misconduct? Um, I entirely understand that frustration and I think a lot of what the SFO does is about restoring public confidence uh, in the system